think he's just a man who, they, latterly they called him Osram because he went red when he lost his temper and he could lose his temper. And he was mm. a very direct spoken man. He was an athletic mobile. He was the guy who said, you know, we're a little athletic, we're a little Volkswagen and we're competing with Ferraris and Maseratis around Europe because mm. we can only sign Basques. He's very direct indeed and, and, a, and a guy who took Bayern to, to the treble, but he was your coach at the time. Why do you think, he, or what was it about his personality, irrespective of the fact that Alcantara was a, a majestic specimen, a specimen of man, he was about mm. your size and yeah, athleticism, was, sort of, yeah. and an extraordinary footballer bringing the ball out, competitive, mm. a winner. What was it about Heinkes that allowed that, that sharing of power? Mm. And what was Heinkes like as a coach for you? He, he was very strict, Graham. You know, uh, everything was a visual for Heinkes. You used to walk in the corridor and you would see your weight on the wall. Weighed every day. Never had a Sunday off. I don't remember having a Sunday off at Bayern Munich in my life when players complain about, oh, we're training again. I'm like, we used to, it didn't matter where we were on a Saturday. Even if we flew back in the Sunday morning, we went straight to the training ground to train. So everything was about that for him. Um, I think he was revered anyway because all the German boys knew how good a football player he was. You know, he's, mm -hmm. you know, played for the national team, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and, and carried a lot of weight behind him. And he might have changed a little bit. Well, maybe not actually when he was at Bilbao and then Real Madrid, of course, where he, he won the Champions League, came back to Bayern, won the Champions League again when they were at. Uh, and in fact, he had me in and around the team that that little trip. The one against Dortmund, I was literally with the team and him and you know everybody it was it was fantastic the game was obviously in London uh, the game was at Wembley um, and he was he, he was always good to me but he was very strict he was quite kept every arm's length a little bit I don't think you could get too close I don't think you got to the inner sanctum if you were a football player with Jupp Heynckes. Um but he is loved by Bayern and the job he did there was brilliant All right, he certainly wouldn't have come back he was a striker like you. He's, he's definitely yeah. shaped in you. He's a different kind of football. He was a striker. Mm. In that organisation, who'd have had the, so was Uli Hoeneß, which maybe some people mm. uh, uh, listening now would forget. Who'd have had the biggest voice? So whoever told you, well, listen, Alan, this is the first time we saw you. Rummenigge was more business and, 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 yeah. and direction of the club. <clears throat> Uli, yeah. business, but also a voice in the football and, and a fan. Like, I, 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 almost an ultra in his days yeah. almost a hooligan ultra um, yeah. there's been punches there's been punch ups and directs but and then you, who, who did put the louder voice about this this guy Alan McInally we've, we've got to have him I would think early probably uh, until you had obviously seen me play a couple of times and then obviously come in but no he physically came to watch me play you know I think he still had the bigger voice in terms of who he wanted to come in um, it was difficult when I mean I still remember myself sitting in the <clears throat> whatever hotel conference room we'd be sitting in for the team meeting and they're speaking German. You know, I'm looking at the pictures on the wall thinking, I wonder if that was here last season when another football club was in here. You know what I mean? And then, and then Alan, I'd be like, eh, surely gone, yeah, sorry, I'm listening. But like, because <laughs> my German wasn't that good at the time. And then one of the masseuses, to be fair, his English was very good. And Hunes was good as well. And they would sit with me afterwards and just say, look, this is how we're going to play. So we're going to play. This is the formation. You're marking. You're doing this with the ball, without the ball, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They always used to talk about that, and it's something I say quite a lot on television now. Foot, football's a brilliant game, but there's definitely two sides to the game: having the ball and not having the ball. And not having the ball sometimes can be every bit as important, if not more important, when we don't have the ball. Now, you're talking about a football team that used to majoritively have the majority of the ball with Bayern Munich. But even they were like, hey, if we don't have the ball, there's a job to be done here. Because the first thing we want to do is get it back. And I was like, well, that makes sense. Teeny wee thing, stupid wee thing. Bayern Munich, big thing. So stuff like that, Heinkes was certainly strong, but strong on making sure I knew what my job was. And to be fair to you, Pankis, and I would love you to ask him this to see if I was telling a lie. I used to have a massage <clears throat> from a guy called Atze Gapart. He was just a diamond guy, one of the masseuses. And I would go about half eight, 
um, and we'd put on Monty Python stupid things on the TV and all that. You know, like the 100 meters dash for, yeah. for people without that, you know, where they were going and, 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 and I'd tell the story. We didn't have it on the TV, we'd just talk about it rather. Super. And Patsy and I would be laughing incontrollably <laughs> and just about things. But every Friday night, your Pinkus would come in to where he knew I was getting a massage, asked me how I was, speaking in German and blah, blah, blah. And I could see Axie's uh, stupidity change when the gaffer came in, because he would kind of back straight, start giving a bit of that. How's that on your wrist, Al? Is that okay? Um, and every single time I had a massage on a Friday night, your Pinkus would come in and make sure I was all right. Every, every time, for the whole length of time I was a Bayern Munich player. The club and when I, look, when I look back now, I think of a, a like, yeah, yeah, that was that was uh, that was kind. 